la 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 hi hi it's me ink voice hi i'm a vichiba nice to meet you you can call me inky or whatever you want hi <laughs> so today we're going to react to the coast of concordia by indirect historian you know the the guy that makes me nuts out of you know things that happen to real you know <laughs> it's actually really good to learn about shit without doing like you know a, a proper research because he does the research for you so i'm spanish so i heard about the costa concordia as soon as we can because you know usually their route goes nearby spain you know because you, they have this route so because italy and spain is just the coast like they're fucking mediterranean cheeses or something um okay so we have this please uh like and subscribe you know things like that uh, i almost have 500 i'm so happy <laughs> to be honest let's go <sighs> the costa concordia <sighs> ship of dreams yeah it's been eight years more than eight years I can still right now smell but the buffets from their five restaurants mm. The casino and three-story theater had hardly yeah. been used. Ah, the oh, gym, James. the day spa, oh. the sheets in her 1,500 luxurious cabins hadn't even been slept in. Oh. Costa Concordia cost $570 million to build. More than... And you could sell. <laughs> you could... You could say that the Costa Concordia... Price is higher than the whole place of the houses in my town. Real That's all the thing I have to say. It's more expensive than my fucking town. I'm a countryside girl. I remember it like it was just a few years ago. Mm. We had left Civitavecchia, a port in Rome, and we were making our way to Savona. It mm. was day two of our seven-day journey. But that ship... Wait! This is Barcelona. By the way, this is Barcelona, this is the Baleares. So, yeah, it would have gone to Spain. It was day two of our seven-day journey. But that ship... I... She was cursed. Oh. oh. When she premiered, the traditional bottle of champagne bounced right off the side instead of smashing. A bad Boom. omen, but I'm yeah. not a superstitious type. Nothing could go wrong on Friday the 13th <laughs> of January, 2012, Both. on the 100th year anniversary of the Titanic, on a ship that's oh. also only safety rated for two compartment flooding, especially not when you have a five-star max level captain like Francisco yeah. Catino. A man oh, mysteriously rose from head of security to the position of captain ha, ha. He knows exactly what to do in case of an emergency. Nah. For example, when he caused this emergency in 2008, when he crashed into a port in Sicily. And in 2010, in Venice, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and came into port too fast and caused another collision. How is he still having the license? So let's How see. does he... S Why? It's a beautiful evening. People are having fun on the slides, drinks at the bar. Antonio oh. Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. Martin the Magician is setting up for his show. And the ship hmm. is setting up for a little detour. It's called oh. a sail by salute. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The locals yeah. hate it, but the customers love it, and it's a tradition. Scatino, the captain, comes into the dining hall with the lady. Hmm. Dominica Samorton. Not his Remember wife! His face because you'll be seeing a lot of it later. Scatino eats his dinner with her and socializes for a little while. Then so he was having a, a side chick right now. Finish up and excuse themselves. Oh my god. They're heading to the bridge. It's time for that sail by salute. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Just 1,500 Why? feet from the island of Giglio. And how are they going to determine this distance? Well, of course, the captain is going to eyeball it. Oh my god. Apparently, it's not an uncommon thing to do. Scatino turns to the fella steering, his helmsman. Who is? Jacob Russell Bin. First interesting tidbit. 
Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock bottom oh. price, and he's a bit of a newbie to the job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and a cleaner. What? It's his first time steering a massive ship. His first fucking excited. first time? At least we think he is. It's hard to tell because he doesn't speak English or Italian very well. Oh my all. god! Off to Wait, start. he doesn't know any language that could be shared with the fucking captain. Uh, what the fuck? The second in command orders the helmsman to two ninety. Now, don't be confused by these numbers. They're just the degrees on a compass. Yeah. At the same time, uh, the captain whips out his. I learned about that. And calls former captain Mario Palomo. Mario Palomo is the reason that for the sail by salute. He says he came up with the idea. He's not doing Gilio at the time. He's in Grosseto. Who lives on the island? They chat about the safe distance to Gilio's shores. It's all very casual. Anyway, Mario says that the safe distance is between 0.3 and 0.4 miles from shore. Oh. The captain is going all in. This is not his first sail by salute, so he's confident in what he's doing. We're going oh. closer than we've ever been before. Yeah. The captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. New heading of 300, he tells the helmsman. Downstairs, Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. And of oh. course, that means that there's all Yeah, it no means someone is inside. Box. She's waiting for the cue, and then she'll poke her legs out. The captain is giving more orders. Pulling gently to 310. Increase speed to 16 knots. Oh. Going this fast is going to be a fatal error. But before we talk faster. about Faster. You, you really are sure to go faster. Problem. Language barrier. Because at this point, the captain oh. says 325. But the helmsman relays 315. Three, so the first officer intervenes and he goes, three, three, No, 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 335. Three, which is all. Yeah, wrong. I was going to be wrong, everyone. 325. I'm just stupid. 325. Their poor communication has them moving at a much wider angle than they think they are. Why do you go However, fast knowing this language barrier? I would know this, except for the next problem complacency about procedure. The standard oh. procedure of a ship this large is for the third officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. Yeah. But they're not doing that. 3.30. What? The helmsman She's not working. The ship reaches 16 knots. The captain then turns to the second officer and instructs him to go to the left wing. That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole hmm. vessel. Yeah, I... It's, it's a lot of A few things. seconds pass. And then, the mood starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly in front of him in the distance. The Costa Concordia, right now, is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks than it should be. Without deviation, oh. there is going to be rocks a direct collision. Oh. oh, shit! Scatino immediately yeah, oh, shit. to start turning away. 335. Not enough. The captain shouts, 340. The captain yells, 350. Now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Well, that's because it's made this ship incapable of such a drastic turn. What they've got Whoa. is understood. Oh, it's too big! Example, it's too big! Working. You're turning, 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 and you're just going straight. You want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. So despite the order of 350, Right now, the bow is still only pointing at 327. Not nearly enough to miss the rock. And oh no, it's about to get worse. Oh. That language barrier again. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. The captain snaps back, 350 starboard, or we end up on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. Oh. Now, don't get confused by the orders from here. We're changing over to rudder instructions. The captain yells, starboard 10, starboard 20, and still it's not enough. Hard to starboard. That means as hard as it'll go. But at this oh. point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. So the captain yells, midship, which centers the rudder. The bow is now less than 150 okay. meters from Skull Rock. Ooh. 10. But the Lift helmsman only gets to port 5 before another order is given two seconds later. Port 20. They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. But then, oh no. Oh no! No, no, language warrior, no! No, 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 no! Possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of port. Undoing. Right instead of left. 
Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but it's too late. He has oh. just turned. A she legit show that this is hadn't happened. The ship will have to miss the rocks up to ten meters, or at least only through this one compartment. A near miss into a sure hit. All they can oh. do now is hold on as the bow of the ship narrowly passes by the rocks. Hard to port. The second officer yells, "We're gonna hit!" Right. Boom. Oh, I knew that. Everyone went to shit. Why do they have seams? It's actually really good. <laughs> it went to shit, oh my god. It was like, oh fuck. Just pass by everyone. <laughs> fuck! Downtown. At time. Oh, uh, actually, this is not. Okay, I'm going to see that it ends around here. Yeah, okay. Add? Oh. Nice. The ship hits rocks on the port side. A 53 oh. meter gash opens up in the hull, and thousands of tons of water begin pouring in. A loud scraping and bang is heard by all passengers. At the helm, yeah. there's panic. Rumblings in the dining room. Martin awkwardly pauses Ooh. his act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, the lady inside is trapped and terrified. There's yeah. confusion across the ship. All of the crew off shift come back on duty. All officers run to the bridge. Technical crews run down to the lower decks to assess damage. Yeah. On connection with the rocks, they lose I mean, it's an emergency. You don't know what happens. Knots, and they are now adrift. Close the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volumes of water are pouring in. So much so that within 29 seconds of collision, all six oh. engines stop working through. Listen a minute. 22 seconds later, a blackout happens. Oh. Lights, electrics, the water pumps too. Everything. The captain orders the helmsman hard starboard. This is the hard final starboard. position of the rudder before power to that too is lost. The Ooh. Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard. Plunged into absolute darkness. Oh, that will make me cast a furby. Oh my god. Of the flooding. When the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. At first, compartment five, which filled okay. very rapidly. Then six more slowly, four shortly. Oh, after. Then there's, seven, there's the engines and the generators. Three. Oh my god. Modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches. These compartments especially though are a problem. Because they contain the engines and the electrics. Oh, what the about luck? Oh my god, no. From propulsion motors to rudder to hotel functions, pretty much everything. When they went out, the ship was a functionless sinking cage. Oh. A few seconds later, the emergency batteries for internal lighting and communications kick on. Oof. When the lights come back on, Martin he flew open the latch as he vanished from the scene, allowing the lady to escape. He's vanished. He's dished the stage. And it caused a huge panic in the theater, as passengers are trying to flee to their cabins and to muster stations. People already in their cabins come out and start oh. life vests. Staff rally and try to calm everyone down. Everything is fine. There's no need for this. Yeah, Any don't worry. We are flooding. There's the no worries. Yeah. Starts. You're oh. such a drama queen. So let's close the watertight doors out to the engine room. Oh. All of the watertight doors. Dodge swat jamming cars may have problems with water, causing continue to flow between the engine room and the electrical compartment. Except for door 12, which is Oh. Jammed. The captain calls Pilot, the chief it's engineer, about luck. as the ship begins to list on the port side. There's water coming in? Yes, there's water. But where? The engine room. Eh. But a lot of water? Yes. Of course. There's water, you can't go down. Let's go down the other side. In a moment, we'll start the pumps, I'll let you know. In the theater, the whole magic box apparatus slides right oh. off the stage and falls into the crowd, further increasing panic. On the bridge, an announcement is being prepared. What? They are going to lie to prevent a panic. Let's just say we have a blackout. Oh. The deputy chief engineer- Wait. Director Cruzy actor makes an announcement for the director's assistant. Oh. The deputy chief engineer enters the engine control room. He confirms hmm. to the bridge that at least compartments five, six, and seven are flooded. Oh. Announcements are made. 
bit the captain to inform you that due to an electrical fault which is currently under control we're currently in a blackout our technicians are working to resolve the situation and we'll inform you of developments as they occur thank you for your attention uh, oh coincidentally at the same time in the restaurant they're playing my heart will go on and it's very <laughs> the situation. yeah he's not helping the, calls the cost of crisis unit Roberto Ferrarini. He tells the crisis unit that they've hit a rock, that they're assessing damages, and that they are also in a blackout. The crisis office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. Well, how are you going to do that? Yeah. You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the engine. You know, hoist the sails? Nah. Anyway, around this time, the wind directs the starboard list, and the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting right back towards the shore, which is a very good thing because you want the ship to end up as close to shore as possible. Yeah. A panicked passenger senses that something is off. This isn't like any oh. electrical problem that she's yeah. ever seen. Plus, I mean, you're seeing this. Noise, and now this is not a blackout. We are so following one she side. She her daughter in Italy. The daughter then calls the police. And the police call the harbour master. While that goes on, a conversation between Pilon and Ambrosio. Oh. The diesel is not starting. The captain asks the engine room, but where have we made contact? Thinking that oh. the incoming water can be reduced. Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. Everything is They're lost. You cannot save this shit, Captain. Down. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, actually, two compartments have been flooded. Really? Worry, it's one. It's, it's wrong. It's three the compartments. In danger. He's wrong again. He goes, so, so it is in danger. Oh my God! Passengers begin going to. He was lying. On their own initiative. The cruise director says, no. we have a lot of people at muster stations that I do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio says, I think that's best. Yeah. The harbour master from Livorno calls the ship. The captain tells them that we, we just have a blackout. How long has this blackout been going on? About 20 minutes. Have you asked yeah. passengers to put on life vests? It, it's just a blackout. I, I gotta go. The harbour master is suspicious. Oh, he's he angry. He superiors that he thinks something more is going on. He calls a patrol boat to the area and asks them to look at the ship. Another problem. The oh. fan on the emergency diesel generator isn't working properly. Pilon manually has to turn the thing on and off with a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat and cause a fire. The captain is on the phone to the lower decks Ooh. asking pointless questions like, is it still flooded? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. The captain is not going to flood. The situation. The harbour master calls again. Finally, he says, the ship is taking on water through an opening in the left side and the ship is listing. He qualifies with, no one dead or injured. The harbour master. He, what? Listing. Wait, wait. He qualifies with, he's lying. That is not something he'll know. No one dead or injured. The harbour master asks if he needs help. Just a tug boat. When in reality, they need a full <laughs> rescue. With three compartments flooded, he asks about tug boat when in the he has rescued. Are really bad. And what the fuck? To improve. He was the chief of oh, fucking security. What the fuck? The Coast Guard orders every available ship to the scene. Meanwhile, up with the passengers, the cruise director's assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Please return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges. No problem. She said this despite knowing it was wrong no. and that yeah. they further endangered lives. Most passengers at this point, though, aren't listening to this nonsense. Yeah. And they're busy figuring out how to They're fucking lying ship. to us. Yeah, bing, I know. Bing, 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 bing. Local Good news. television has already picked up the story and they begin broadcasting live radio feed from the bridge. Hey, Capo. Captain, the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, oh. let them go to shore. So then general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We oh. risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. Pilon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety yeah. officer relays this to the captain, but after no response, he orders the engine room to evacuate on his own. Evacuate, yeah. The captain says, no, stay. We'll leave it. So what do we do? General emergency? Yeah. Oh. The captain tells Ferrarini that he's abandoned. He doesn't want to admit he's ship. in shit. Another announcement is made. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The situation is under control. Please remain calm. And at this time, proceed to your master station. They're located oh. outside on deck four. The Livorno Coast Guard calls again. The captain declares distress. The Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. Oh. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot. 
as he rushes down to the helicopter base. Oh. He shuts down the emergency generator for the final time. The first rescue vessel arrives. By this point, the lifeboats are already going. Okay. Luckily, the ship is very close to shore. Oh, perhaps too close to shore. The ship forcefully runs aground, creating an uneven center of gravity. Oh. And it begins heavily listing starboard. The captain issues a general emergency on board. The announcement to abandon ship is finally called and alarms ring out. Oh. And with that comes panic. And now that they're listing, with many of the lifeboats too awkwardly positioned to enter the water, there aren't enough readily available and they have to start going back and forth to the shore, picking people up and dropping them off. The patrol oh. boats report to Livorno Harbour Master that the ship has run aground and is listing heavily. So the harbour master asks the captain about, and the captain says, "No, no, 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 no. the ship is still floating." Is uh, it still floating? What? To maneuver it onto the shore. They know he's lying. Hold on, I'm reversing it. Beep, 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 beep. The captain then says to bottom out the starboard anchor. Oh. So they drop out the anchors, but let out too much chain, effectively rendering them useless. Oh. The deputy mayor of Giglio, Mario Pellegrini, and tobacco shop owner Giovanni Rossi arrive at the harbour. They watch the scene unfold. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races to board one of the lifeboats, returning oh. to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. Yeah. What? To find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. The matre this says... This is Pellegrini as he abandoning the ship. Oh! Scatino tells everyone to leave and take radios. But not before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priorities. Dimitri Christidis and Sylvia Koronica leave with him. The maitre d' and Sir Morton both get out of there. By this oh. point, approximately 300 people are still on the ship. Melee reaches the helicopter base. Oh. The first helicopter, a slow-moving Augusta Bell, was he already went away. from the tarmac for Fucking the hour-long flight shit. south. He changed it closer, no one could recognize it. crew member left on the bridge, coordinating evacuation. He then leaves to help pass... The captain didn't go with his ship. The captain just went away. What the fuck? Lifeboats. The bridge is now abandoned. And then, the ship's black box stops working. Apparently there were technical problems with it. That means, from here, things are going to get a little foggy in detail. Oh. A while later, rescue helicopters arrive, but they're struggling to find the ship because they're expecting it to still be well above water. Passengers are scaling down the port side by ladder as lifeboats return to pick them up. Oh. 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 De Dominka. Yes. He's not allowed to make a film I'm, movie. I'm allowed, I'm allowed. Who say you are? A second so helicopter, a faster model, sets off. The ship stops healing and comes to a final resting place. Now the Coast Guard calls the captain because he's just learnt that the captain has abandoned ship. The captain claims, uh, uh, no, actually I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. Ooh, I'm a klutz. Oop. But now that I'm on board, I, I may as well be back on shore. Oh. the captain to get the fuck back on board. And the captain kind of acts the fuck. and then you... effectively refuses. So the captain makes it to shore. From here, we only oh. have Stream news reports to rely on, so it's not going to be. Oh! So bad. But they say that Giglio's police chief then finds 110 survivors on the rocks at Point Gabianara, and among them oh. is the captain. It's not known whether the captain helped anyone while he was there, and in fact, the police chief claimed that he just sat on the rocks and watched other people do the rescuing. Oh! A while later, a rescue boat picks up the captain and takes him to the harbor. He speaks to the police. He then finds the ship's onboard chaplain, Father Rafael Molina, and cry to him for about 15 minutes. Then he goes oh. to the harbour master's office to receive probably he knows the he's going to hell. dressing down of his entire life. Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the captain back to his hotel. The captain takes the 30-second cab ride to the Bahamas Hotel. According to the cabbie, he was beaten like a dog. He was cold and afraid. He only asked me where he could buy a pair of fresh socks. Oh! But then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. The captain is usually the last to abandon ship. He died all the time! We were the last to leave the ship. No. All day Saturday, rescuers search for people on the ship. 
On Sunday morning, a South Korean couple is found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slept through the crash and woke up unable to exit their cabin. Oh! The last survivor, Manrico Giampandroni, was found with a broken leg. He was the cabin service director. Oh! In the end, 32 people died. The final body was. Wait! Not 32, no! In the end, 33? Including the savage walker who died in an accident on the ship two years later during the recovery. Oh. 32 people died. The final body wasn't discovered until nearly three years later. A crew member, oh. Russell Rebello, and it's believed that he died a hero helping passengers off the ship. The Costa Concordia oh. was the largest cruise ship disaster since the Titanic. Oof. And then there's the ship. This is what happens to a 110 thousand ton cruise liner when oh. it's left half rolled over in the ocean looks so pretty to be honest it looks it looks like a last of us uh you know the last of us uh scenery backgrounds or something like that you know apocalyptic apocalyptic things oh look at it oh I like this to be honest. <laughs> Looks nicer. Looks like you can play a fucking uh, video game inside it. But this oh. isn't the end. It's just the halfway point. What most people know is that the Costa Concordia had crashed, many dead, and then the captain abandoned ship like a coward. Yeah. But there's a whole veritable spaghetti of details to untangle. Let's dive in. What? Ah! Uh, no, 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 no! No! Ah! Pop! <laughs> Looting! Fortnite! Loot box time. The Costa Concordia was more than just a floating resort. There's a mall. A casino. Cha-ching, cha-ching. This iron chest was full of safes and cash registers oh. and expensive fittings. And there were plenty of gamers prepared to sneak by authorities and try their luck in the hot zone. Oh. Within days, police divers reported that valuable items, once seen lying around the ship, were now missing. Oh. High-end liquor, expensive furniture, Dining sets, cash from the casino, cash registers, jewelry and display cabinets, safes, oh. Japanese woodblock prints by famous 18th century art. No! You had to keep 12 pieces by Hokusai! No! As well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. It was never found. <laughs> Who oh. steals a big fuck off bell? Even the server admins were getting involved. Four divers who were part of the company contracted to refloat the Concordia were spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. Oh. A patrol boat was dispatched, and the men were caught inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of stolen goods. The four men are charged with <laughs> stealing and thieving. Oh. Tension. Later on, stolen as well as legitimate items found their way to Amazon and eBay. Chips from the casino, postcards, and cabin access cards became highly oh. sought after souvenirs. It even has a watermark. Some Australian guy even made a listing for the ship itself, advertising it as buyer to collect. Oh. And although there were plenty of bidders, eBay pulled the plug. Oh. Oh. Wow. The relationship. <laughs> I know you want to see Scatino go to jail, and we'll get to that. But first, we have to talk about someone else. Dominica Samorton. That was a close one. Oh! It was speculation that she was on the bridge that evening because she was the captain's mistress. Oh! Tense media speculation reports that her presence distracted the captain. They both denied their love for years and oh. maintained that they were just friends. Although she did later admit to the media that she found him handsome. Ugh. And how could you not? You so ah. when you smile. No! She says there was no romantic link between them. Some people would like to believe and they want to know I have something with him. It's more interesting. It's like, you know, some 
spicy, spicy. in the story. Mr. Morton also oh. loved the spotlight, however. Oh, everyone, oh, look. And took several oh. interviews. But as the pressure mounted upon her, she began making ominous threats to Scatino. Oh. Saying he. Francisco Scatino, I give you. Francisco Scatino, I give you just one week to tell the truth about what happened immediately after you did the announcement to the ship. One week. Must confess. And that you have but one week to come clean. Oh. But things from here get weird. Spicy. Sir Morton is a bit of a wild card. <laughs> in oh. a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take away a package. Huh? huh? And what was that package? What? Drugs, apparently. Ooh. Oh! So rumors began that the ship was running narcotics for the Mafia. And not without cause, a number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. As an oh. aside, Scudino was tested for drugs immediately after the crash. He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Makes it oh. and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was searched and no drugs were reportedly ever found. How did we get here? Oh, right, a helicopter. Yeah. Sir Morton commented <laughs> on it again the next day and said, actually, that helicopter was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Okay, wait. So she expected to get some sort of first class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? Wait, yeah. How did we get here? Oh, right, sex with the captain. Don't oh. expect to head to the captain's cabin where they found Miss Sir Morton's lingerie and other articles of clothing as well as a makeup oh. bag. The jig was up. But they continued denying it. Sir Morton mostly faded from international attention until she was told to appear before the court to present witness testimony. The judge Oof. pressed her to be truthful about their relationship, or she would be held in contempt. Either tell me the truth yeah. or shut up. So finally, she admitted it. See, si. Yes, I had a sentimental relationship with the captain. Stop. But now, stop asking about my private life. She was indeed the captain's lover. Oh! Some trouble or nation. What's it? No, she did. I'm his wife with C. Mortan. Oh my oh. god! She and Scatino had been having an affair for several oh. weeks. She also said that on the night she boarded, she didn't have a ticket. Ticket, please. And didn't need to pay because nobody questions you when you're the captain's lover. Naturally, oh. she gave another confusing interview after leaving court. I want to say that today is the second time I die because the first time I die in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, problems. What the fuck? Today I die the second time because, of course, <laughs> people the allergies. find out like her stupidness. Oh my god. Try to hide. Subsequent to the trial, she used her fame in Moldova to become a political activist, often what? appearing on television and radio and in articles covering protests, accompanied by pictures of her being arrested by police. Oh! She's complaining that there are enough beans in the area, but it's actually too hard to come there and point out that there are beans right there. The crowd standing around and telling police is allowed to protest here and generally in white f 19. <laughs> She's saying this is normal. Look, trust everywhere. It's normal. It was some stuff about victims of violence, women's rights, Girl power. yada yada yada. And interestingly, part of a push to block the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. Sure, sure. Oh. Other than that, I don't really know what she's been up to. Let me just check on her Insta. No, oh, God, not again. Oh, God, not again. <laughs> Pop. <laughs> Lose it. Oh my god. Several civil suits were quickly lodged against Costa Crociere, and their parent company, Carnival Cruises, immediately saw a share drop of 23%. Don't beat. Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health, lost belongings, oh. and loved ones. Either they yeah. allowed him to divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion dollar ship was. Within a few days, facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the bandwagon against the captain and the crew. That was not the ordinary route that the ship was uh, taking uh, at the time. Oh. Not only taking, but the time the, the ship was 
claiming that the ship was not approved to deviate from the route. But that yeah. wasn't true. Approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles, or that it was against company rules. Also untrue, because investigators found that they oh. didn't have any rules about deviating. There's no evidence that company rules with rats in the scheduled side trip. Rats as in the they tacitly encouraged sail by salutes. Now, in response to the civil suits, Costa Crociere offered passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. Okay. That's kind of small. Yeah. 11,000 euros. Let, 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 let's size up. Here at Europe, 11,000 euros is like less than what you get in a job in a year. Like what you get in a year, you know, a whole year working, you get 15,000 euros. Minimum. That, that's the minimum. That's the actual minimum. Even if you go like half the job, you know, four hours instead of eight, it's like twelve thousand. So yeah, about mm. fourteen thousand dollars is the minimum compensation under international law when yeah. the ship is abandoned. This was to reimburse them for their tickets as well as any costs they accrued in having to unexpectedly travel home early. And that was supposed to release them from everything and yeah. anything that has to do with this accident. I cannot ask for more than this. A lot of passengers, understandably, were not too happy with this deal and they refused to take the money. We think of the course, insult, it's less than a fucking year of work. Passengers went through. We think that the compensation being offered is not commensurate. Here. Take it. Go ahead. Compensation being offered is not commensurate. Later, Costa oh. Crucia would lodge a plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a 1 million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial. The judge agrees. Costa Crucia oh. is now off the hook for all criminal liability for the whole thing. They've washed their hands of the incident and flex the residual oh. droplets of responsibility onto the faces of six staff members. Passengers and relatives of the dead are livid that the company has been able to avoid criminal responsibility. Offered is not commensurate. Civil suits against the company continue. Oh. By the way, the residents of the island of Giglio also banded together and sought damages. They didn't get much. Oh. Eventually, passengers who refused the initial compensation of 11,000 joined civil parties against Scatino in his trial in 2015. Ooh. They were awarded 30,000 euros each. Other cases, especially those involving lost relatives, are settled for undisclosed amounts. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Scams. Oh shit. New attorney Peter Rene traveled to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. At Rene and Rene, we personally work on every case. And we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the shortest amount of time. Mm. And while on the job, a seventh case <laughs> via mail. email. An elderly woman, a loner, said, Help me, Mr. Ronai, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. So Mr. Ronai agreed to speak with her. However, there were some inconsistencies in her story. Oh. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Odd, but Costa oh. is known for having stowaways. Gotcha, bitch. Still, Mr. Renai was suspicious. They would mm. miss cheaty old Petey, would they? Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. Ilona said, Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend. Zolt Horvath. He'll know all the details. I'm up all night. I'm going crazy, he said. But Mr. Renai was still suspicious. Yeah. Because then she asked, How much money do you think this is worth? Uh. This is a huge red yeah. flag, Petey. In That's a rather red flag. In 20 years in the East, never had this experience in a situation where someone loses a relative and they just talk about money. Every family just wants to know what happened, how it happened. 20 years of doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? So Mr. Renai hired an investigator and sent photos around of the missing girl. The next day, the phone rang. Oh, hoi hoi. It was the boyfriend again. Ah, uh, look, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding and the child isn't missing at all. Uh-huh. And then he claimed he was confused because he had oh. done too many drugs the night before. Oh. Okay. okay, can I speak to the daughter then? At first, he was refused. So Renai said that he'd have to file a missing persons report to the police if he couldn't. The boyfriend relented. Oh. That night, Renai met with Zolt and brought the police with him. 
He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen mum. Yeah, I saw her today. Oh, really? Yeah, we went to the park today and we went on the swing. Oh, oh no, the jig was up. So the mum walks into the room sheepishly. It's a miracle. And the story changed again. Okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from the ship. And then I immediately flew back to Budapest. Although don't worry about checking my leg because there are no visible marks or injuries. Uh, yeah. Old Petey, I'm beginning to think they weren't even on the boat. Yeah. Also, it turns out this lady isn't her mum, it's just a neighbour. Eventually, Renee managed to make the pair confess. And then they said, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken any money. And in the end, it looks like there'll be no oh. criminal punishment for the scam. Because Hungary, a former communist country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the books. Oh! Never sleeps, call yeah, actually, really good flowers and have one of what's the children. You're just having fun. Please, no shoes. Oh, that's a bad idea. Oh, that's a bad yeah. Idea. But. <laughs> Vada de bordo. What? Mario, would you teach me some Italian? Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> Means get back on board for fuck's sake. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Gregorio de Felder, the naval officer who shouted at Scutino to Vada aboard. Wait, a naval officer of the cops of the Port Authority Head of Operations, Section in Livorno, the Falco was responsible for overseeing the safeguarding of photos about Livorno. Frigate captain in the official Italian rock. In Atlas Anson countries is equivalent as Usually, commander, equivalent to lieutenant colonel in the Ordo army. Ordo Caso became a bit of a national hero overnight in Italy. He, like the rest of the world, expected Scatino to go down with the ship. No! Oh. <laughs> and when the captain chickened out, De Falco was there to admonish him. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. Oh. When the captain first reported just a blackout, De Falco didn't believe the story and immediately began preparing a rescue effort, which likely saved several lives. Yeah. His actions were applauded by most Italians who were tired of their public servants being corrupt and avoiding responsibility. Yeah. Accordingly, shirts sporting Vada a bordo caso would be <laughs> by the end of the week, others setting it as their phone's ringtone. But then, in September 2014, oh. without warning, De Falco was transferred to an admin role in the Coast Guard. Hear what I said, he'd been demoted. De Falco said that he had been passed up for promotion, that he had also not been oh. told which admin office he was even being transferred to, and that it oh. all effectively cancelled 10 years of his career. De Falco was tres furioso, and there was public <laughs> speculation that <laughs> it was furioso. to bad blood no, tres furioso. himself and Admiral Delano, his former boss. His status among the public overshadowed his superior in many ways. Oh. On the other hand, his boss said, Ah, no, it's part of a normal career progression for naval officers and that he must show more maturity and professionalism to advance his career. Oh. Now, it's hard to know what's true in office politics, so let's leave that alone. And anyway, in 2018, De Falco said buenas noches, ya later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. In March, that oh. year, he was elected to the Italian Senate, serving as a member for Livorno. He still serves there today. I'm the oh, nice. But <laughs> oh, jail time. Oh, okay. The day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. However, it was clear that this would not be a straightforward investigation. So the judge released yeah. him under house arrest at his home in Sorrento, a town in Napoli. Napoli. By July oh. of that year, the house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed within this general area. Oh. While under house arrest, he wrote a book with this journalist from Rai magazine. I have oh. no idea what it says, I don't speak Italian. But God damn it, he must have some kind of charisma going on. Oh. Because there's been a lot of speculation in the press that he had an affair with her as well. How many affairs do he have? Hold on, I got it, I got it. Not content with abandoning his ship, this dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. Scutino <laughs> and five others are facing criminal charges. Straight away, everyone lodges a plea bargain with the court. And all of those plea bargains are accepted, except 
for Scatinos. Oh. And the condition of everyone's reduced sentences are that they must provide witness testimony against Scatino. He touched oh. me. Ciro, Jacob, and Sylvia were all given suspended sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or house arrest. Not a bad oh. deal. A good deal. A good deal. And that meant that Scatino for was them, now not the big things, of course. Ciro, the first officer, was the first to give his testimony. On the witness stand, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and oh. other guests on the bridge. Oh my God. That there was confusion over who was in command. Oh. Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't <laughs> have to with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the outskirts <laughs> of Jakarta. And then they said, Oi, we still want that witness testimony. He just scalped it again. And he hasn't been found since. <laughs> After that, Ferrarini gave his testimony. Then Silv... Oh, look, we don't have time to relitigate the whole trial. So let's just go straight to the verdict. Guilty! Guilty, guilty, guilty. Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, causing a shipwreck, abandoning ship, and lying to authorities. Oh. He was sentenced to 16 years and one month in prison. It's almost like 12 but years. Wait, there's what? still the appeals. 11 years, sorry. The appeals sorry. trial begins. And the verdict on the appeal? Surprise! Rejected! Oh. So Scatino's lawyers appealed again. And the verdict on the final appeal? Rejected. Scatino made multiple attempts to secure a plea deal, but was denied by the prosecution each time. The prosecution called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison, calling the incident a titanic affair. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. A titanic! Scatino was not present. His lawyer stated that he was waiting outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five years oh. and four months after the disaster, he was finally in a cell. Oh. And I will not be making any comments. Oh. 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 You float in the Concordia. What? Plain on sip chips. The salvage what? operation was enormous. It took over two years and cost an estimated $1.2 billion. Beginning oh. in early 2012, they first spent two months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, they had to pump seawater in so that the balance wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. Oh. In early 2013, a platform was built under the ship to prevent it from falling further. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached oh. to the underwater platform. The sponsons were then so dragged that underwater was that. and opened up to allow the ocean to fill them. The ship could then roll over properly. By late 2013, the ship was upright once more. Nice! The sponsons were then attached to the side of the ship to help keep it balanced. It now rested partially above water and crews could walk around safely. By July 2014, Oof. the water was removed from the sponsons and compressed air was pumped in to lift the ship. Oh. And she was ready to cruise again. This time to a port in Genoa. It was a four-day hmm. towing journey to the docks where a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. Oof. That same weekend of the towing, Scatino was busy. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the Bay of Naples. He appeared on the front page of a local newspaper. What? Flanked by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. What the fuck? He was just partying? What? Anyway, oh. so these are the things that I remember from <laughs> the Costa Concordia. Italy. That sweet maiden of the sea. Uh. And as for you, little fella. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, it's time Hi. to return you. From whence you came. Uh. <laughs> no! Boom! Oh! Six quick things. One, NordVPN, good product, check them out. No, enjoy it too. There's a new video on the second channel. You probably didn't see it because it was temporarily oh. restricted. Now it's not. Enjoy. Three, if you've never seen the second channel before, give it a, oh. there are a couple of secret channels as well, but I ain't telling you where they are. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm not telling you where they are. Oh my god, what the fuck is going on with this? Oh, I mean, yeah, I got it. It's it's really simple, this storyline. It's really, really, really simple. Oh my god, thanks everyone for watching. Like, subscribe, uh, take care, don't die. Oh, oh. <laughs> fucking is because you know fuck it made me it made me realize that ha that is more than 10 years this happened more than 10 years yeah i feel old i feel older than i thought fuck <laughs>